Hey everyone, Tyson here. Welcome back to another Saturday episode of the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Before I dive in today into the intricacies of our digital relationships with email, Jim and I have an exclusive offer we're thrilled to share with you. We've spent a lot of time on this. It's called Maximum Lawyer and Minimum Time. It's a roadmap that we have meticulously designed to guide you in building the firm of your dreams. This is normally something that we just give to guild members whenever they join the guild. But what we're going to do is we're going to extend this offer to our podcast community. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, give the first stage of maximum lawyer and minimum time to you completely free. All you have to do is text me at 314-501-9260. Just text stage one to 314 501 nine two six zero and the guide it encapsulates really the 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 years and years now seven years of expert advice that we've gotten from many people that we've had on the podcast as do it it it, it encapsulates our experiences over the years so i hope i hope that you will take advantage of it because there's a lot of great information in there, so check it out. Just just remember, text stage one to us, and we'll send that out to you right away. All right, so let's get back to today's focal point, and that is our really our modern day obsession with emails and the transformative power of checking our email on a schedule. Right? How, how about that? Instead of that constant dinging that you get. Let's just start by saying turn off the notifications. That's that's a, a given at this point. You should not have notifications. Your stress levels, if you do have notifications on your watch or on your phone, it's probably driving you nuts and your stress levels are probably through the roof. But um, what I want to talk about today, though, is checking email on a schedule uh, because I, I understand that the conveniences of, of this digital era that we've been living in, living in um, they're great, but they're also not without their challenges. There's that constant urge to always refresh your page, always refresh your in inboxes, check your email, pick up your phone, look at it. Um, is a It's a constant challenge that many of us have grappled with or currently grapple with on a, I wouldn't even say daily basis, I would say a minute by minute basis. I, I know how some of you are. I've seen you in real life. I know, I know how it goes. Um, I've been there myself. It's, it's a very stressful thing, but the, the question is at what cost, what does it cost us? What does this ongoing digital vigilance exact on our mental well um, on our effectiveness as attorneys and as, as business owners and on, on our efficiency, you know, these are definite costs. And there's this interesting study it's it's um, from uc irvine and the united states army which i, I felt I, th I thought that was a really um odd combination but what they did is they tracked participants with heart rate monitors um, both before and after subjecting them to email yes i said subjecting them to email and they found that a a relentless stream of emails keeps people in high alert state which significantly escalates stress levels and then on the other hand, though, they found that limiting email access dramatically reduces stress levels, which is interesting. Um, it actually gets better. Th those without access to email switched windows an average of 18 times per hour compared to people with access to email. They did so on an average of 37 times per hour, which was a significant difference. What it was really bad, though, is once you are interrupted by an email, or an email notification, it takes an average of 23 minutes to regain the same level of concentration that you had on that initial task, which is just shocking to me. Um, and if you kind of think about Tim Ferriss's strategy that he talked about in the four hour work week, and, I, and what's interesting is, is I, and I, I don't think he really had the science to back this up at the time, but he talked about how he only checked emails a couple times a day and he did so at designated times and he did it to to minimize interruptions so he could and, and, and to maintain his focus and to also reduce his stress uh, and i i understand how some of you 
are right now, you're probably saying, well, um, I can't do that because I'm going to miss something really important. Uh, there's going to be something really crucial and I can't miss it. And let's be honest, that's, that's ridiculous at this point. Um, you're probably just trying to find ways to, um, uh, get back into your email inbox. You're trying to find an excuse to do it. You're looking for that dopamine hit of checking your emails, what you're doing. And it's, it is not worth it. Um, the, the likelihood of you having something super urgent hit your inbox is very unlikely. Um, they, if it's that urgent, they're probably going to be giving you a phone call. It's just how it works today. Um, and as Tim Ferriss puts, being overwhelmed is often as unproductive as doing nothing and is far more unpleasant. That is a very, very good point. Okay. That overwhelm, it's very unpleasant. Um, not a good thing. What's interesting, there's actually, there's another study. It's, it was printed. It was published in uh, computers and be uh, computers in human behavior, and they found that. And so, this is what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that you pick a couple times a day to check your email, three times a day at, at most. But they found that people who check emails only three times daily, they report significantly diminished stress levels. Um, on top of that, it boosts productivity, and it has positive effects. Actually, tangible positive effects on overall well-being. Uh, so the, the proof is in the pudding. Okay. It's there. Uh, you, you, the, the, the science backs it up. Don't try to tell me that you're more productive if you check email all the time. Cause you're not the, 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 the data does not support your position. Um, if, if you are at this point checking your email on a regular basis, you're doing so because you want the dopamine hit. That's why you're doing it. All right. So what are, here's some pointers for the transition to only uh, scheduling your email checks. Make sure you do establish designated times and, the, and make sure that you know everyone in your, on your team knows about it. And you're going to want to make sure you're aiming for periods after your core work tasks. For example, I like to do like my m main thinking work in the morning. And so I, I don't check my email until after that. Okay. So mine's at 1130. Yours may, it can vary from time to time. Um, there are several studies I've seen that, that support you should not check it in the morning, at least first thing, definitely not first thing. So don't pick up your phone and check it right away. But do choose designated times. I think starting first thing in the morning with email is probably a really, really bad thing. Um, the second thing is just make sure you have transparent communication with your clients and the people that you deal with on a regular basis. I use autoresponder. I know that that sometimes is unpopular to, for many people. You can use a signature um, or a, put something in your signature. You put something uh, in your footers. It just let people know that you 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 have a certain schedule. Uh, it could be as simple as I review emails at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. daily. Okay, it could be something as simple as that. I do want to caution you though. Um, I once had a client email me because I did not respond at one of those times and they were unhappy. <laughs> so if you you could you could just say that you you check it twice daily and you don't have to say when those times are if you if that is one of your concerns. But just just know that if you do include times in there, people are going to expect a response. That's just that's just how it is. Make sure you also are you're harnessing the va the the email tools that are out there. There's plenty of them out there, but regardless of the tools you use, prioritize um, the emails. Okay, so you're gonna want to triage them, kind of like you would triage um, patients at an emergency room. Also, create filters. There's a lot of cool filters that you can uh, use. A lot, of, a lot of things you can use when it comes to creating filters to help you know, get emails to where they need to be. Uh, and then gosh, get rid of all the, the notifications, um, get rid of your desktop notifications, get rid of your phone notifications. They're an absolute killer and they're going to get people heart attacks. They're just awful, terrible for mental health. Um, something else to consider is that if your email response or if the, or if an email you're drafting, if it takes longer than, or um, if it, if it's longer than a sentence, you may want to consider just giving the person a phone call because the issue is if you send that, um, there's my guess is if you send, especially, a, you know, a one sentence or two sentence email, there's gonna be a lot of questions that they're going to have. Uh, and one, if you, especially the longer emails, it takes a really long time to draft some of these emails because you want to be as detailed as possible. 
just freaking pick up the phone and call them. Yeah, just pick up the, the, the phone and call them. It is, it is a lot easier. But the bigger problem is that you have a lot of context that you lose when you send something in just text. The, so if you want to convey a certain message, pick up the phone and call the person. I understand as lawyers, we want to get a lot of things in writing. I understand that. And if, and if you have a valid reason for doing that, definitely by all means, get it in writing. So I'm not saying that, but if you do want to convey a certain message a certain way, pick up the phone and call as opposed to sending the email. It could save you a bunch of time because you're, instead of you sending emails back and forth to convey that message to them. All right. So I do want to wrap things up. Uh, but I, 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 do, I want to remind you as well, the, in, the intention here isn't merely about enhanced productivity. It's really not. It's really that conscious effort to prioritize our mental health and, and our holistic well-being, okay? It's, it's really about that. Productivity is one of those benefits of it as well, but it's really about the mental health aspect. Um, so keep a focus on that. Remember, if there's something specific you want me to cover on the show, just shoot me a text, 314-501-9260. You want to get stage one, just text stage one to that same number. As always, make sure you stay tuned for our next episode. Until then, remember that imperfect action will always eclipse perfect inaction. Take care.